What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. My name's Ash, you'll know me as Brommer18. Today we're continuing our FIFA 22 tactic series. This is a series where I show you how to recreate real systems. Today we are taking a look at Xavi Hernandez's Barcelona tactics. This has been highly requested and we are finally getting round to it today. I can promise you that these will be recreated as accurately and as effectively as possible, but I can't promise you that you'll win every game. It's never a promise that you'll win every game, so just important to note that. For any of you who are new to the channel, before we do get into the tactic, let me quickly remind you that if you go and check out my Patreon, you'll find lots of great perks and rewards on there, including access to my FIFA 22 Custom Tactics Package, where I give a deep dive breakdowns ratings and rankings of every tactic that we do cover including this one you'll also get access to exclusive tactics videos such as sean dyche's burnley tactics uh, tiago Motta's spezia tactics marcus silver's fulham a whole host more as well that you wouldn't get access to on youtube and also access to my scouting package as well where i give you real scouting reports detailed on our whole range of players based on hundreds of hours of my own analysis so please do go and check that out the link is down below with that being said let me get into the tactic for today so first things first system itself it is a 4-3-3 i'll take you through the position changes because there are a couple and then we'll go through the tactics and then we'll round off with the player instructions as well so first things first let me talk to you about the position changes well there are two despite the fact we've gone for the 4-3-3 holding we have actually changed the two central midfielders to right and left attacking midfielders in this case it is Frankie de Jong and Pedri the reason why we've done that is because we want them operating in the more advanced areas of the pitch we want them almost getting as far forward as the attacking three Often you like to see people sort of talk about this system, how it, it mends into like the, the 3 2 5, for example. And that's kind of what we're trying to replicate here. We're trying to push them up for as you know further than what they would be as central midfielders. Now, obviously, it does mean there's a slightly bigger gap in normal circumstances between them and the defensive midfielder. However, as we'll come on to in the player instructions, we have um, done something that hopefully should alleviate those concerns that you may have regarding that so we move both of these up to right and left attack in midfield the reason why as well they're right and left as opposed to one of the main camp is just so they'll come out in the wider areas a bit more and support the wingers as the fullbacks as we'll talk about shortly are more of an inverted kind of fullback so uh, that's why we have them at right and left in terms of the tactics then well first off how do Barcelona play when they are out of possession? Well, they like to employ a counter press, which is press after possession loss. And what you'll find is different to, say, even his Al Sad team, which we have covered already. And go and check that one out if you haven't done so already. They were slightly more aggressive with their press and slightly more consistent, I guess, because of um, mm. you know sort of the the competition of the league, etc., and the quality of the league. In Barcelona's case, I've found them to be more of a counter-pressing team, but then they lay off a little bit more and regain their shape if and when they don't win possession. Width is down to 10. It's going to get you very, very compact. It's important to note that these particular defenders should be really tight together, not allowing players um, and balls to, to come in between them, instead trying to force the opposition out wide. It's really the job of the likes of the wingers to man those wide areas, and the defenders will become really compact and very very narrow the depth is up to 80 giving you a nice high line we've not boosted this all the way to 100 particularly because for the majority of the time the centre-back pairing might be someone like PK and Eric Garcia not very fast centre-backs as a result you want to try and compensate for that so we try and drop this off a little bit but still give you a high line and 80 does just that however you will notice that we have we have gone for PK and Arario in this case just to give us a little bit of extra pace they have filtered him in um, so far throughout the season as of recording this so what do we have when they are in possession then well first things first with build up play it's slow build up what you'll notice the most about this this will drop players into the box on goalkeeper restarts but it will also mean that players are going to come and show for the ball a bit more very very helpful it's going to allow you, going to allow you to play through the thirds more effectively compared to if you're on something else like fast build-up the chance creation is forward runs as opposed to possession and this is why 
um, we have such a difference in this one compared to, say, Guardiola's tactics, which we covered on Barcelona recently. So go and check that video out as well if you haven't done so already. What this does is it creates a lot more movements, not just from the wingers, because we can create that anyway but also for any attacking midfielders. We want them utilising and exploiting as much space as they possibly can. And this is what we're trying to do here. In addition, you'll also find that despite the fact that obviously they are very possession orientated, there's so much pace, so much energy in this team, particularly from the front men, Aubameyang, Traore, Dembele, Torres, for example. They will often exploit teams on the counter-attack if and when they need to. It's not just about trying to you know, work your way at the field at a sort of steady, slow tempo. They will, you know, exploit that space very, very quickly and dangerously if they have the opportunity. And we've seen it many, many times. No more so can I remember than, um, you know, I'm pretty sure a goal against Napoli in the Europa League recently. So, um, you know, with forward runs, we can get that as well. The width is down to 10. Again, very compact, very narrow. And the reason why I've done this is for the fullbacks. Again, talking about how they invert a bit more. Not so much Alba. We'll come on to him shortly. But certainly, Danny Alba is always looking to help with the uh, the central areas more. Um, and so we're trying to get the most out of that as much as possible. Again, this is partly why we have the attacking midfielders as a right and left attacking midfielder as opposed to a cam. And also with the wingers, they will create the width with the player instructions, which we'll come on to very shortly as well. Other than that, nice and compact, very, very supportive for that possession-based style. The players in the box is on seven. It's going to give you roughly three to four. You'll naturally have the three uh, attackers, the, weak, the two wings and the striker in the box. And occasionally one of the attack midfielders does join. Maybe it's De Jong, maybe it's Pedri. One or the other usually um, you know, will occasionally drift into the box as well. Obviously, you'll also notice that there's not so many crosses coming in in this team. It's more about getting to the byline, cutting it back or working it into the box. So it shouldn't be um, you know, fundamental to your approach. And finally, we set pieces, a little bit of a mix up here. On corners, we've got it on four, and that's going to give you enough players in the box to really be a threat. But on free kicks, it is down to three this time, meaning that you'll have some slightly more options to go shorter from free kicks, particularly when they're deeper, wide free kicks, um, that, you know, there's not as much chance of you being able to, to loop it in and really create a goal scoring opportunity, particularly on the game. So they'll drop another player or two off, um, and then you can play a quick short restart and then go from there and it will give you um, you know sort of possession and allow you to work the ball up again so what about the player instructions then well starting off with the goalkeeper to Stegen in this case we've got him on sweeper keeper and comes across his as well comes across his bit of a starter pack for FIFA um, to be fair I pretty much always have this on in my videos because you're trying to look for the goalkeeper to seize the initiative, to take control and help you out as well. Very overpowered and highly protected on this game. So, you know, just trying to utilise that. He does play like that anyway. He likes to play on the front foot and that's signified no more than in the fact that he's also a sweep keeper as well. With you playing that high line, you are looking for him um, to come out more and really take control of any situations, even when he needs to, any balls over the top, etc. Um, you know, he can deal with that. With the two centre-backs, we've changed them. Now, I did contemplate whether or not to change Rao to aggressive interceptions. I've noticed that he often steps out. Um, I've personally not gone for it. However, if you feel like you want him to be a little bit more aggressive, you can do that. Um, you know, I couldn't... I didn't really look to, to find a balance in between that. So, again, it's up to you. Um, I personally kept him on normal, but, um, you know, no problem if you want to change him to aggressive. But in terms of PK, especially, you know, just keep him the same. Now, what about the fullbacks? So, we've spoken about this very, very hard to recreate these in-game. I've tried my best. It's still not enough, um, but it's as close as you're going to get it in the game. So, as we spoke about, Danny Alves will often look to come into the central midfield and support them. Now, we can't really replicate that. So, the best way we can do it is to have his run type on inverted and then his attacking runs on stay back while attacking. Again, this is the closest that we can get it. Um, to him, you know, carrying out that sort of inverted fullback role. Now, with Jordi Albert, there is a slight difference. We've still got his run type on inverted, but this time, with his attacking runs, he's unbalanced. Because what I noticed in my research is that Alba would sometimes get forward a bit more. He'd sometimes look to support attacks a little bit more. He's still got, I guess they're trying to coach that out of him, but 
you know, it's something that is, is kind of ingrained to him, so natural. We've seen him do it so often down the years, you know, attacking that flank and overlapping often. So, um, you know, you're still seeing those sort of elements to his game. So as a result, I put this on balanced um, and occasionally he's going to drift forward and help support the attack. But if he does, it will be in an inverted manner, meaning that the wingers are going to create in the width, which we're going to come on to very, very shortly when we do talk about their instructions. On to Sergio Busquets. His defensive behaviour is cut passing lanes, making sure that it's zonally he'll be marking and looking to... Uh, match up any outnumbered situations by looking to cut off the lane instead of going man to man and leaving one man free. His attacking support is stable while attacking naturally as he acts as that not only that defensive midfielder looking to break up attacks but also that possessional pivot as well. It can rest on him and um, you know he can reset attacks and, and keep the ball just sort of chugging along. The interceptions is on aggressive as we've seen you know we know how he likes to play by now he's often liking to step out impose himself on the opposition really looking um, you know to win the ball aggressively and that's what we're trying to recreate here really really helps particularly when you're trying to break up opposition counter attacks as I've just spoken about um, you know because he's more willing to step out more willing to try and seize the ball and intercept the pass before mm. it's being played so that's a very very important Important. His defensive position is cover centre. You won't need him being dragged out wide because of the fact that generally the fullbacks are going to be staying back and we'll be able to man those wide areas. In particular, if he does, you're going to find some gaps in the middle as well. Finally, his positioning freedom is free roam. Really, really handy. Gets him moving about from side to side, showing for the ball often. Very, very good instruction. And again, when you're looking for that sort of deeper pivot, type player free roam is a really really good instruction to uh, to replicate that so we've got him on free roam as well next up onto the two attacking midfielders then so we've got some slightly different instructions first things first um, we'll talk about both of them really we've got them both on comeback on defense to make sure they are tracking back again as I've spoken about in these videos before the fact that you are hopefully controlling possession for a large amount of the game should mean they shouldn't be having to track back too much you won't be having to rely on that but if and when they do need to and the opposition do have possession in your half then um, you know they will be helping out and supporting in that defensive phase their positioning freedom for the both of them is also on free roam. Um, and again, this is what we spoke about earlier where um, whilst we want them looking to support the attackers and join that sort of attacking five, we also want them dropping off sometimes to help link the defence and the defensive midfielder with them and the rest of the team. So how do we do that? Well, free roam is the best way because what free roam does is it means that not only they're going to come out wide, and they're going to look to move more in those intricate areas, but also they'll drop deeper as well. And that's really, really important because then it's going to allow you to have that link. And as a result, you're not going to find it stagnating and there being too much of a gap and not being able to bridge that gap in between the defensive midfielder and the attacking midfielders. Both their interceptions are on normal, but the one change that we have with both of these, as you will have noticed, is the support on crosses. With De Jong, it's on stay on the edge of the box, but with Pedri, it's on balanced. Now, what you'll find, as we kind of alluded to earlier, is one of the attacking midfielders will get into the box in those cutback and crossing situations, and the other one sort of hangs around on the edge of the area. Now, unfortunately, because it's FIFA, we can't get that balance. You know, you can't get one going in and one coming out and then sort of rotating in between that. So as a result, we have to pick one to get into the box and another one to stay on the edge of the box permanently. So as a result, I just went with Frankie de Jong. I thought that he'd be more suited acting as that advanced pivot, whereas Pedri would be better suited as someone who gets into the box a little bit more. Again, he's only on balance because we're not looking for him to constantly storm into the box, but more just do it in occasional situational play as well. Right then, on to the free attackers. Starting off with the wingers. In this case, we have gone for Traore and Torres. Again, the, um, the instructions are very, very similar regardless of the person. However, someone like Dembele um, is in there as well. Or Aubameyang comes out wide. So we've got them on comeback on defence. Again, similar to the attacking midfielders. Trap back when they need to, but you shouldn't be having to do that um, to a relentless and repetitive degree. And then the chance creation is stay wide. And as we kind of spoke about, these are the guys creating the whip. They're going to stretch the play, try and stretch the opposition. What this does when it gets them on the touchline is that then, you know, either it leaves them in space or the opposition then stretch out and stretch out their shape. And as a result, they're leaving space in the horizontal areas for the likes of De Jong, Pedri, 
to get into. And that's another reason why we got them as attacking midfielders. So as you're starting to see here, everything is really starting to complement each other now. It's all, you know, the pieces, um, you know, really forming part of a jigsaw, so to speak. So as a result, we've got these on stay wide. Their support runs is getting behind. These are the guys who can look to penetrate the back line, really utilize their pace and their movement. But in addition to that, though, it gives you also that counter-attacking outlet. Again, as I spoke about earlier, sometimes they will look to hit teams fast, quickly, in a deadly manner, and this is how you're going to do that. So with them getting in behind, they're going to be constantly um, you know, looking to run in behind that back line and, and really create those goal-scoring opportunities. And finally, for the both of them, the support on crosses is also uh, getting to the box for the cross as well. Right then, let's finish off with the striker, pierre MP Bramiang, with support runs. He's on drift wide, and again, it helps with that movement because he's often going to be interchanging with the likes of the uh, the wingers, etc. Also looking to, again to utilise his pace. If and when he needs to run out wide, go into the channels, he can do that. Again, lots of positional rotation in this, lots of movement and fluidity. So as a result, you get a bit more of that with him on drift wide. His defensive support is on stay forward as he looks to be that outball if and when he needs to be. And then attacking runs is actually on mix because we're not constantly looking for getting to behind. Sometimes we want him to show for the ball. Sometimes we want him to back into the opponent. Really does a whole range of different things, particularly someone like Ubamiang who is kind of that complete forward because naturally he's, he's quite tall, but he's also very pacey, um, you know, fairly comfortable with the ball at his feet as well. So he can do a range of different things. And this allows you to do that on with him on mixed attack. So as a result, you get a good balance and a good, um, you know, sort of alternative ways to attack and approach the game. So with that being said, it is time to round it off there. If you have any questions about the tactic whatsoever, please let me know and I will do my best to get back to you. Any questions that you may have, get at me in the comment section. As I mentioned at the start of the video, if you haven't done so already, check out my Patreon. Loads of great perks and rewards on there. Whole range of stuff coming as well. I think it'll be really worth your while. Um, so do go and check that out. The link is down below. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. Um, and drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it as well and want to see more. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. The link to that is down below. And on that note, I'm going to send you into the gameplay now where you can see the tactic in action first hand and until next time i've been brahma 18 and i will see you soon